So welcome to the Chaos DNI meeting for January 13th, 2021. Um, we don't necessarily have a facilitator. We'll just sit in silence because we have nobody to facil facilitate. <laughs> oh, that's easy. Let's let's go over to the issues and pull requests, see if there's anything new. We hey, don't need a fan facilitator. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that. Uh, this was on the agenda last week, but we didn't make it to this. Uh, I just I always, hmm. I'll put the link in here. So uh, let's see, We I'm sharing my screen so you can all see I'm looking at, let's start with pull requests. 22 days ago, Lawrence opened patch two. Um, you fixed the DCO sign off. And there was a suggestion Lots from the last- like a rebase problem. Scroll back down. Let's see, resolve conflicts. Okay, I think we released it. So now there is the link to the issue, which we can fix. And then down here, I think we had updated the questions since Lawrence forked it. Now looking at this, let's go back and look at the change that he actually wanted to make. Uh, okay, there's a wording issue. That's easy enough to do. And then down here, space, adding trace data information. It'll be, so, someone needs to just take a look at this and compare what he actually changed. Or I guess Wait. we can look at the commits. Yeah, I'd like to just, if we can. It's still a huge change. It is pretty big. What am I, what are we, what are the changes here? I mean, I don't really even see. According to this commit, uh, he added the title question description. Yeah, but that would be the case. Was already there and now it's duplicate. And then data collection. I think he split it out into collected via surveys, interviews, analysis of trace data, interviews, I see. trace data. Oh, I see. As opposed to all in one. Let's see, this is the project burnout. Let's go to what we have on our website right now. I was just headed that way. <laughs> So yeah, right now everything is just under data collection strategies. Yeah. But we do have here surveys, trace data, interviews. So let's take a look at his thing again. Here, how about we look at the final file? Okay. Uh, files changed. It looks like there are some questions that have been removed from the um, from the original from the version on the website now. Well, I think we spend a lot of time writing those. To put these so next he, to each other. 
there's some text in there. Okay, so under implementation, right? We have, oh, could you, what happened? I was reading yes, your screen. Yes, I'm re rearranging my screen and need to redo the sharing okay. of share, so that we have it side by side. So I need to switch from sharing my okay. window to sharing the screen. Screen, okay. Thank, okay, good. Um, and so, data will be collected. So we added that sentence at the top. See where it says data will be collected. Yep. And then looks like there's a paragraph there as well. It's kind of informal. We don't normally do that. I think that's an old statement from before we cleaned it up. Okay. Oh, so this might be like an old fork. Yeah. I see. Yeah, because the same holds true for, see that like italic stuff kind of in the middle of the page there. Yep. So I don't think so we can look at that. This was 22 days old, this patch. This is my new pet peeve of old issues and stuff that aren't getting merged or closed out because you don't know if things have been resolved or not. Yeah, 22 days ago, I mean, could we have done something in the meantime? Check the logs? Doesn't look like it. I would check the logs itself. It might it may be that most of his comments are no longer valid because of things we've done. Um, in which case maybe we can merge any changes we want from his patch into what now exists. So the only change that we made on this project burnout file in that, well, that's 28 days ago. Yeah, so maybe he just has a really old fork and didn't update it, in which case I would maybe explain that to him and let him make the, the changes again. Um, I got to kick a chicken out of the house. Yeah, his version is from November. Can you tell when he forked it? Is that what that's saying? Um, so yeah, on his um, fork, it looks like he used the commit that we had on November 11 and then added his own commits. I see. And I whereas in our own repository, we have the same commit from November 11 and we have one more from December 16, but we made a lot of changes. I see. Okay, so it sounds like it's a discrepancy between his fork and he was working off an older fork. Yeah. Okay. So then I'm, I'm with Amy that maybe we respond to this PR by saying it appears that they're working off an older fork and some of these issues have been addressed in the most recent release of the burnout metric. And they, if they have them, please make a new pull request off of the most recent. The one thing I hate about GitHub and forking is the fact that it's very hard, short of deleting everything, to get your fork up to date without it including other things in, in your pull request. Yeah. That's why I love Garrett. <laughs> um, so... Right, because I see what I, issue. Well, it's also a little painful. Like he's taken the time. He's taken the time to provide feedback on the metric. And regrettably, our response has to be, can you do it again? Which I don't particularly like. No, but the fact that he didn't update before he made the feedback, I think we now have a valid going back to him. Okay. Um, from that aspect, 
the fact that GitHub doesn't make it easier, easy to update a fork, unfortunately, is the tools. Okay. It does send, doesn't it send you the signals like you're this many commits behind at this point? It does. Well, not necessarily because it's, you're doing your push into your fork and your fork mm -hmm. does not know it's behind because you may want your fork behind. So okay. what I end up doing all the time is doing a pull, a reverse pull request. But then if there's updates upstream, those end up as new commits into your fork, if, especially if they're from you, which is why I end up deleting my actual fork and yep. reforking every freaking time. And just for start GitHub. over. Yep. In GitHub, I agree that is terrible. The way that I do it is I just have a local copy. And so I maintain my forks locally because maintaining them in GitHub is not possible. Yeah. It's, it's funny because the way you just described that, Georg and Amy, if we, if we have a metric that talks about forks, right? I mean, there are just so many ways that like the way you described it, Amy, I mean, you could be a person generating a dozen forks, <laughs> even though it's basically working off of the same. Well, on the plus side, it only counts as one fork, even if you delete the fork and refork. Oh, it does. It removes you as a fork and then it re-adds you as a fork. Oh, well then. Um, so you're not okay. increasing the you're number. Not just, okay. I just think the process really <clears> sucks and... I'm so into how Garrett does it. And, you know, if I want to redo it, I just do a git pull master origin and then I update my stuff and then I get do my git review. And yeah, you're installing more stuff up front, but I think the whole overall change process is a whole lot nicer gotcha. than doing it GitHub and forks um, because it does become an issue. And he'll never know that his fork is behind when he goes to do it. So he didn't realize he was way out of date when he made this change. And there's no way for him to know because his fork, his git status is all gonna be on his fork, not on the master that he forked gotcha. from. Yeah. And I also have, I never edit directly in master. I always create a feature branch so that I can pull from origin. That's pretty into, standard, I think. Uh, committing to master is usually suicide. Yes, but you have to do it Sorry, manually on your end, and there's no easy way to do it in GitHub. There, anyway, there, uh, there is, I mean, there is. That's how everybody does it in GitHub. It's easy. Sorry, you, I'm late. So if your fork is behind, how do you update yours without deleting it? Um, in master? Yeah, without well, I, using I, 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 So if I've oh if I've so if I've created a brand new fork in my if I've created a brand new branch in my fork that does not exist in the GitHub fork repository, you're you're right. You GitHub will not create that same fork. You have to merge it into a different fork. But you can merge it into a different fork. Um, that's, I guess, so, okay, sorry. I'm, I'm in conversation, I had school pictures. So I'm running a little, yeah. little behind. To the, to, the, to the point that was made earlier though, we, we could mitigate a lot of these issues if we were to merge our pull requests faster. Yeah. I don't that, think that's, that's certainly yes no. where we've had, the, that's where we've had the problem on Augur for sure is when our pull requests get merged slowly. Yeah, I don't think that would have solved it here because the changes that Lauren's made are newer than our latest changes to the file. So he was already outdated when he started working on his changes. Yeah. So going back to just closing this out, do you agree yeah. with the message that I wrote? I saw it, yeah. Yes. Okay. Then... Sorry, Lawrence. Thank you. Thank you. If, um, yeah, if he did update his fork, whatever he created his new fork off of, he created it off of an existing fork in the main repository. He could do a pull request from whatever fork he created his new fork from 
and then do another pull request in his own repository to update it. There is a path. Yeah, the reverse forking, two but steps. It, that'll, that'll still make branch problems when you yeah. re-pull request it. That's why I've just started deleting everything that doesn't go through Garrett and re-pulling because I end up having extra branches in my in my commits when I put them back up. Yep. Yeah, issues. Garrett is superior. Let's look at oh. issues. So there was a, <clears throat> so I took a, a look at some of these before the meeting, and there was one that maybe we could talk about real quickly. It's um, three oh five. It was opened by Matt Snell. So Matt, are you on right now? And unmuted. I see him, but I cannot hear him. Oh, sorry, I was totally muted. Um, so I was just saying, in different focus areas, if you if you go to the um, to like the go to file or like the search for file within the GitHub repository, you can find metrics that are kind of the same thing in different places. Um, like, uh, for example, if you search issue, you get issue tracker and issue label inclusivity. Mm -hmm. uh, which issue tracker looks like an older version of that. Just a couple metrics. I think those are two examples that I found quickly, but. Yeah, there, there's just, I, I noticed, I've noticed, I've been noticing them like left and right. Um, it might just be good to go through and try and get rid of the ones that are older. I think. Looking at this, we developed the issue label inclusivity, which I think is like issue inclusivity focused on how do we use labels to look at this. And then we have the issue tracker and we haven't even defined this metric. So it was a yeah. placeholder. At the time, um... It was issue tracker and issue tracker inclusivity, so it was it was a little closer to duplicate in that case. Yeah, like yes. documentation is a metric, I think, still. Yeah, under project and community documentation, it's just a it's a pretty full looking metric now, but almost full. So hold on, with respect to issue to Gayor, the um, issue. Issue tracker, that one has been released, so I'm cool on that. Issue, issue. tracker. I don't think that's right there. That. Yeah, go down. Issue is. label inclusivity. Yeah, yeah. So that one's been yeah. So the other one, issue tracker. This is not currently in the spreadsheet, just F it's more of an FYI. Yeah. And so it's there. I'm gonna open the spreadsheet as well. So it would be down in that set, section seven. If I recall, we turned issue tracker into issue label inclusivity in the spreadsheet. So one option, one option would be to go back to the repo and get rid of that here. Yep. Okay, so we'll remove that. And then documentation. I think this was that issue. Remember this forever issue around documentation. So this was, I think, documentation as that giant meta metric. 
that then ended up being broken down into documentation usability, documentation accessibility, or, yep, exactly, those three right there. So I think we can probably get rid of documentation too as a metric, if it is actually a metric as like just what you had done with issue tracker. Is there a way we can avoid getting like artifacts from migrating to a, from like a small metric like a template to, uh, to like moving on to more metrics or some other metric? It seems like the old one seems to get left behind. So like just kind of like what's happening here, like we, yeah. we started out with this thing and then but it's, it still gets left in the repository and gets put in the list of metrics, at least as far as the repository goes. Yeah, I mean, maybe it just doing what you just did. I mean, this is helping us keep it cleaner. Okay. So it may just be this process of every now and then trying to track down where we're seeing duplication. Okay. Because I think we can remove those two and then comment and close on this one. Yeah, I'll close yeah. the issue. The only way that to your point, Matt, to avoid this in the future is as we add or edit files that we go back to this document and see that we create a placeholder for something similar do we still want to pursue that or not? So should we, so in this, so the removal would be the removal of that row right there, correct? In this readme, plus the removal yeah. of the markdown file or the removal, I'm sorry, the removal of both of those rows and the yes. removal of the markdown files. Is that right? Yes. Okay, um, I, I'll do that. Right now, I'll put in a PR to remove those and to remove those markdown files. Awesome, thank you. Okay. I'm, I was just saying that out loud to make sure <laughs> I have it straight as to. All right. Um, I'm going to reopen the issue until it's executed. Yeah. Yep. And I'll, oh, gotcha. I'll, I'll, I'll attach the PR to that issue or the multiple PRs. Yeah, and then we'll know. Okay. How does, uh, okay. Okay, I updated our minutes and what we decided, what we did. Was there another question on this? No. Not on that one. Awesome. Shall we look at other issues or is that enough issues and pull request uh, maintenance for today? The only question I had <clears throat> was, do we, the metric ideas are starting to be built out pretty heavily in I'll let Gary come back. So my only other, yeah, hi. The only other question I had was we're starting to get 
a pretty long list of metric ideas here in the issues. Should we just continue to leave them here? Is it too much noise? Uh, I, it's just a question. I don't care either way. Or maybe see what other people think. We could start a queue somewhere um, that says metrics ideas go here. But that would be another another format then. <laughs> so the question is how do we want to use the issue tracker? Do we want to use the issue tracker for things that we are currently working on? Do we want to use the issue tracker to keep track of ideas even when we are not working on it? Because if we want the former, yeah, we can create a markdown file with ideas and link to the issues that we have closed. And occasionally if we go through the issue track and move things into the markdown file and close them so that we only have things that are actively being worked on in the issue tracker. If we keep it similar to how it is, I'd recommend adding a, um, an actual issue tag. <laughs> I think one way it actually might be helpful to have these ideas and things that aren't fully fleshed out in, in the issue tracker, just because it helps make some of our discussion a little bit more transparent and moves it out of the Google Doc and we can benefit from search engine uh, boosts with the discussions and make some of the stuff that we just talk about easier to move. And, and that's also something that we, if I know we had conversations before about GitHub, GitLab, but we're not necessarily binded to platform with that either. Um, I just think it might be a helpful way to get some of our work more out wider into the public. And maybe we can look at using something like a project board to bring better clarity into what's being worked on right now versus the things that are more backlog or not yet discussed. So I think those are good points. So like project board here within GitHub? Yeah, and so that way we could be a little bit more free, free wielding with the amount of issues we have open, but we, we sort them and organize them in a project board. So it's really clear, like what are we actually looking at week by week or what things are coming up? The usual agile-ish stand up Kanban kind of workflow. like that. I just quickly yeah. hacked it together. <laughs> yeah, proof of concept. Boom. Yeah. I, I mean, if we wanted to use something like this with the GitHub issues, it plugs in really easy. Um, I don't know. I just think I, I like the idea of trying to use some, use the issue trackers a little bit more as discussion points, just because our notes are really great. But sometimes it's like when I try to think of things that we talk, we're talking about like in a meeting two months ago, or, which was a good idea or something we, we had in discussion, but just fell off mm -hmm. just from the holiday or whatever it is, you know, might be a good way to keep track of some of those older conversations too. Yeah, I also like to have the history on the issues and to keep them open until we decide to not do something or have done it. How do I add issues in here? So you can do it from the issues themselves, but I know there's that add cards button on the right side of the board. Now for, the, for the column headers, I believe you can make those, those column headers actually the tag. So if it gets tagged, uh, the issue automatically appears in the column. Yep, the automation pieces. So like new issues always get opened in a specific column could be like an unreviewed to be triaged or, or triage column that they're opened in by default. Maybe that's something that um Georg, if you want you and I want a workshop, we could come back with something for the next meeting and and maybe demo it, do like a proof of concept. That, that would be helpful. Yeah. Just because I I know that maybe we can we can spend some time configuring the the, the layout and what issues we'll put on there and all that. Yeah. 
I'd love to learn more about these project boards. They're very helpful. We've they're, they're for organizing like what needs to be done. It's a nice feature. So we have an action item then. Okay. I'm gonna close the issues conversation for today and because we do have other things we wanted to talk about. We still have 13 minutes left. Sounds good. I finished those PRs, by the way. Okay. And yeah, they can worry about it later. Remove issue tracker. Yeah, I, I just, <laughs> the files change would be that it doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah, I was looking if you also removed it from the readme. That's what I, I was looking for. Is that another PR? Yep. Okay. I did it as three separate. Yeah. In GitHub, it's easier to make those separate. It's not I, just... I wish was easier. Okay. Okay. Uh, and it's done. Thank you. So can I go to the bottom one, translations real quickly? Yes. So we talked a little bit about this in the Asia Pacific call today. So for those of you that don't know, we um, were providing Chinese and Spanish translations. Look at that work. <laughs> Spent all morning on that. Um, so, uh, what, we're, what we proposed in the Asia Pacific call is, is every time, just from a process perspective, right now, all of the metrics have been translated um, like prior to December 1st. So any metric that has been released by a working group after December 1st has not been translated yet. See what I'm saying? So on December 1st or so, we had probably 55 some odd metrics and they were all translated to Spanish and to English. And those are gonna be part of the release in a PDF come March. The metrics that have not been translated, or I'm sorry, the metrics that have been released after that initial translation, they haven't been translated. And I think that the aim was is that because they are whole metrics, we'll still use the service that we have to do the translation. We wouldn't ask community members to do whole translations of new metrics. And I wouldn't do those translations until after the release. So for example, just because if there's any changes in this little window of comment, I'd hate to do a translation, have a minor change. It'd just be kind of a hassle. So any new metrics that um, come forward Basically, translations will always lag one release, right? So then that I can handle irrespective of GitHub. That doesn't, that's not what this uh, repository would be for. So what this repository would be for is if a released metric has a minor change to it. So for example, um, a sentence was added or a description was updated in between releases. So it's it's not a, a ton of, of change that occurred. 
on the metric, but something subtle that needs to be addressed. And this does happen occasionally. We we look at a metric and we're like, that is a, a silly sentence and we need to update that sentence. And so the idea here is that we would use the, the translation repository as a way to signal what metrics or track what metrics need to be translated. So we wouldn't have that work be marked in each of the respective working groups. We would have that work marked in the translation repository. So if DNI has a metric that has been released prior and has updated so slightly in between releases, we would not only accept that change as part of the next release, but we'd post an issue in the translations repository that draws people's attention that this metric needs to be to be looked at and a sentence or two needs to be translated. Does that make sense? At least on the surface, it's process-wise not totally figured out yet, but the idea would be is to kind of focus all of the translation work into this translations repository. So at what point would we signal that the translation is needed? Is that at release when we say, oh, we just released an update? Or when the projects merge a pull request, they have to remember to also say, hey, there's a translation that needs to be yeah, That's a good question, right? Does it happen in real time or does it happen kind of with that lag release? Yeah. I haven't thought about that. Do people have thoughts on that? Also, is it a is it a roadblock to release? If we uh, if we can't get the translation done, do we not include that metric in the in the release? Like in the in the PDF in the translation? Yeah, or PDF. in the or in the the translation uh, release as well, because those will be release the, the regular release and the translation releases at the same time? Do we do we release the one release, but not the translation release? So to Georg's question, I guess, um, it probably makes sense to do the lag to me, just so we ensure that it has been re-released again. Because again, comments can show up right until that last day. And so I'd hate for a group to do a PR you know, a working group to do a PR, <laughs> ask for a translation, and then prior to release, there's still some minor changes that needed to be done. So does that answer your question, Garrick? That would be my inclination. Yep, so at release we say, we just now look at all the metrics which have changed and then start yep. the translation process. Yep, for that next six month window. Yep. Um, and I don't think we're talking about a ton of changes here, right? I mean, the metrics stay pretty stable. So this isn't a huge amount of work. Um, and then to your point, Kevin, if during that window, a translation didn't occur. So there was a, an issue that was open that says, could somebody please translate the sentence in this metric that was added? Um, if that didn't occur, um, I, I don't think the metric would be blocked from being released because it's already released. And I think the English version could still be released. Um, so I think it's possible that, that a translation couldn't occur and it just that translation just wouldn't show up in the next translation PDF. Does that make sense? Because there wasn't a translation done. But, um, um, but if there was a translation that just hasn't been updated, do we, do we, do we just say, do we continue to release the previous translation, or do we just say nope, not until we, not until we get the, uh, the new translation, even though this metric was part of a, a previous translation release? I would just say it's the previous one. Okay.
then the issue just remains open. And I would assume in the translations, we point to the original anyway, where we say, this is a translation of, if you want the original, go here. So I'm going to work on this a little bit. Like I said, this just came up a couple hours ago. So more to come on that. OK, done. Done. Perfect. We still have about three minutes. One of the, of the last item we have on our uh, agenda is to think about some self-reflection. So that was also me. Um, we can start next week with this, but basically what these two points are is, you know, we're going to be reaching out to, to folks externally to help take a self-reflective look on the chaos project with respect to our own DNI practices. Um, and then following that, um, publish the methodologies by which other communities could do the same. Right, so how as a community can you kind of reflect on your own DNI practices? So it's kind of two things. One is looking at chaos directly, and then the second is um, from that effort publishing guidelines by which other communities could do the same. And so the question maybe for next week is for that first part, as we're doing self-reflection on the chaos project, we're asking people to do that reflection external folks to do that reflection. Where do we capture that work? So do we have another repository? Do we do it on the mailing list? Do we have Google Docs? Like where does where does that work get, get captured? Because I um, over the years. Yeah. Is it the kind of thing that lends itself to a survey where people have a sort of a private place where they can reflect and it's a box? I don't know. I don't know. I'm, it, that was the only other alternative that I thought of when you were listing possibilities, depending what we want from the reflections, I suppose. So as Georg has always pushed me, it's great to do all of open source work in the open. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think that's as much as idea. I share that value system. Yes. And so just kind of creating a platform where this work can be done this initial work can be done. I don't know what that looks like. So we could start with that next week. Awesome. Thank you for that update. And we'll put that on the agenda for next week. Do we have in the last minute, any volunteer for next week to facilitate? I, I can facilitate next week if you want me to, but I'm also happy to seed facilitation to others. I don't know, you just took it. <laughs> I have never ever in my life heard some other person claim. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. It's like I ended up I think I did three in a row because I said the same thing and then no one volunteered after that. So yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much, Sean. Okay. Thanks everyone for joining Thank us you. today. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye.